This is video number 564, the 101 basics on forgiving yourself. I recently made a huge accidental mistake in my life. I battle, I'm battling to get to grips to it. I'm really struggling to forgive myself and laugh it off. According to the redemptive gifts listed in Romans 12, I am a prophet and we are notoriously hard and tough on ourselves and on others. But I have this thing that I did five days ago. Even though I have done all the normal things, prayed in my own tongue about it, took long walks to pray about it, recited Bible verses to myself, my thoughts and mind are still constantly circling back to this traumatic incident. Someone once told me she is in a fighting fit marriage that her life coach said that if there would be a video camera installed in their house while they are fighting, will you be specifically proud of it all or will you be disappointed and ashamed? This made me think, if there is a video recording with a blinking red light installed on Saturday night, I would have been terribly ashamed. So this is my desperate measures on praying, on pleading to God, please teach me how to forgive myself. Rob Bauer once said, doing prophetic actions is like throwing stones at a window to catch someone's attention. If praying is knock, knock, knocking on heaven's doors, then prophetic actions are like throwing stones at the window. Hence, I am making a video in this serious plea I'm taking Holy Communion to please say, please Lord, help me. I would firstly like to admit, Lord, I do not, I do not have feet of clay. I sometimes feel I have muddy feet of muddy clay in roller skates, on melting ice, on a downhill. So please, please help me. I feel like what Paul said, that he is the chief sinner of them all. In 1 Timothy 1 verse 15. So getting back to the video camera example, Isaiah wrote that God can totally change us. Even, even if we are blood, red, crimson, full of sin, that God can make us pure white. I want God to hit the delete on the spiritual video camera for both me and for all the witnesses of this disastrous accident. I want God to remove all this incident all the way to mush. I do not want the devil to accuse me of this incident again. I've seen on several occasions the word had become flesh, flesh on so many Bible verses. For example, God can make things easier, Zechariah 4 verse 6. Or that God can give us an Ephesians 3 verse 20 out of this world kind of blessing or that God has predestined certain wonderful blessings for us, or that God's timing is always um perfectos. But now I want to see this manifestation of the promise that there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ. God knows all the stupid things that we will do in the future, and He still loves us, still He blesses us. So if He could, could forgive me for my mistake recently, I want him to teach me. I want him to empower me to forgive myself. Furthermore, I also know that God makes all things work together for good. I want to see this with this incident. God will repay us seven times for our sins. I know that there will be a time when I, if I surrender to him, that I will be happy that it happened. So please let this do manifest. Furthermore, I also want to surrender my roller skates, my muddy feet to God. Please God, place barriers in place so that I do not have to repeat this action again. Please empower me with your spirit not to sin anymore. According to the psychology of guilt, guilt are mostly associated with loneliness. I can relate to this. May we have a platform to share our guilt, the things we feel remorse about, that we can feel human. This quote from Brene Brown, Empathy is the antidote to shame. The two mo most powerful words when we're in the struggle is me too. Guilt are also associated with anxiety. We know that there is no fear in love. So please God, pour out your spirit of love in our hearts. The other two negative spin-offs spin 
is catastrophizing, making the very worst of a bad situation. Please, Lord, help me with this too. Help me to see the situation in your eyes or through your eyes that it was only one small little oopsie instead of the major titanic sinking I currently see it as. And also overgeneralizing, believing that if one bad thing happened, many more must have happened as well, like a domino effect. I want to lay this in front of God too. No, I think that every incident will have this outcome please show me that it is not so finally because of our natural tendency toward egocentrism we assume that others place far more importance on our thoughts and our actions than what they actually do the behavior over which you are tormented by guilt such as an inadvertently insulting a friend may hardly have ever been penetrated that friend's consciousness. This is also an expert from a psychology website. Please show me that this is true, that I'm being too hard and too tough on myself. Guilt becomes a past experience, which is renewed in the present moment. Please God, teach me how not to be a lot's wife, looking back constantly to the past, missing the holy sacred moment you have created for such a time as this for right now i want to be here now not living in the past may we overcome may we be more than conquerors in this battle against guilt